This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. So another accounting standard that goes through and recaps bits and pieces that you've seen from financial accounting. Uh, this one here, though, doesn't really advance things any further. I think the only advancement that you actually see is that you have to learn more events after the reporting period that are either adjusting or non-adjusting. OK, you've seen a small list of adjusting and non-adjusting events previously in financial accounting. Now you're going to get a couple of more that are added on top. OK, so uh, what have we got? Uh, remember, you've got your reporting date at the end of the year. Something happens between that date and the date that the accounts are authorised for issue. Does whatever happens in that intervening period go through and mean that we need to adjust our reporting date figures? Or do we leave them as they were and just make some form of disclosure because it was a material non-adjusting event? OK. Uh, so the key bit that you've got to look at is when that event takes place in the post reporting date period. Uh, did the condition exist already at that reporting date? And does it now give us more information about that condition? OK, so we've just gone through in the previous chapter and looked at provisions. A common scenario for a provision is a legal case. Maybe at the end of the year, uh, it was only possible, but subsequent to the reporting date, you've now realised that you're going to lose that case. Therefore, it is now probable. So therefore, that court case will now be provided for. OK, uh, likewise, the bankruptcy of a customer, the standard takes the view that even though the customer hadn't gone bankrupt at the reporting date, uh, it will have been sufficiently bankrupt at that date anyway, because businesses don't just tend to go bankrupt overnight. OK, so therefore we will adjust uh, our receivable balances for the amounts that were owed from the customer by effectively writing them off. OK, uh, the other one that we've seen in terms of inventory, if you sell the inventory in that post reporting date period uh, below its cost. So there's its cost. There's its NRV. It was measured at cost. NRV's fallen to below cost after the reporting date. You do go through there and adjust your year end inventory. Uh, and then what you've got there, maybe you've got some PPE. You've agreed to sell it at the reporting date. So the condition existed, but you hadn't negotiated a price. Uh, once that price has been negotiated before the accounts are signed off, you can then go through there and work out the profit or loss on disposal. OK, or if you like, if it's then moved out to a non-current asset held for sale, you can then go through there and get a better assessment of the fair value. OK, uh, a non-adjusting event uh, is whereby that condition didn't exist at the reporting date. So any fall in the value of investments, uh, that value will fall because of something that happened on the date of the fall. Some new information became available to the stock market. So therefore, that information, that event didn't exist at the reporting date. So it is non-adjusting. OK, if it's material, it would be disclosed. Uh, a major purchase of assets. Again, we hadn't bought the assets at the reporting date. It did not exist at the reporting date. It wouldn't be prudent to even recognise that purchase of assets. However, if it's material, it will be there within the notes to the accounts. OK. Uh, the announcement of a discontinued operation, the announcement of a restructuring after the reporting date does not reflect something that existed at the reporting date. The decision for discontinuance, the decision to close down that business and restructure was made after the reporting date. So that condition did not exist. OK. There's a few. You just need to add to the list as you go through there and practice the various questions. So should we just practice a couple of the questions and see how we get on? The biggest likelihood is that they're going to be some form of multiple choice question, uh, likely to be in section A, uh, within section B. You don't want four or five just on IS 10. Uh, so it's likely to be in section A. So you might not even see it within the exam. 
Uh, so it says, which of the following material events after the reporting date and before the financial statements are approved are adjusting events? Okay, so did the condition exist at the reporting date? Okay, uh, there we go. Uh, so what have we got there? Okay, uh, four situations, uh, one, two, three, and four. Uh, so, if you have a valuation of a property providing evidence of an impairment in the value at the reporting date. Final list. Oh, no. Uh, what do we do? Uh, let's let's think about it. Okay. Uh, the property has fallen in value, but that is given as extra evidence of the fact that it was impaired at the reporting date. Okay. You know... Remember the process for an impairment, you have the impairment indicator. So at the reporting date, the indicator was in existence. We just weren't able to get the information to perform the review at that reporting date. We now have that information to perform the review. As the condition existed, then that will be an adjusting event. Okay. Uh, second one bit easy, the sale of inventory held at the reporting date for less than the cost. So there's its cost, 10 RV is now below, that's adjusting. Fraud or error, that's adjusting. And then number four, the insolvency, that's adjusting as well, isn't it? Okay, so one, two, three, four, they are all adjusting events. Okay. The one that you can add to your list is the one there about the value of the property received after the reporting date when it was noted that there was an impairment indicator at that reporting date. Okay, excellent. Bit odd. You're not unlikely to see all of them being correct, but there you have it. Uh, the second scenario. Uh, what have we got? Okay. Uh, so. Again, which of the above events are adjusting within the financial statements? Uh, so it says here, the following events took place between the December reporting date and the date they were authorised for issue. Okay. Uh, so it says the company makes an issue of 100,000 shares, which raises $200,000 shortly after the statement of financial position date. Uh, is that adjusting? No, uh, we do not go back and adjust the share capital and the share premium balance. The, the share issue didn't take place at the reporting date. It took place after the condition did not exist. Just note, and it's a really small point, that uh, in EPS, again, probably getting into SBR territory now, but the EPS figure... Uh, that we calculate in a later chapter would take account of those additional shares. Okay, so there we go. Don't worry too much about that. Uh, number two, uh, legal action brought against the company for breach of contract. So a legal obligation there. Uh, the outcome was decided just after the statement of financial position date, and therefore we're going to have to pay damages of eighty thousand. Uh, no provision has currently been made. Well, clearly they thought that it was only going to be possible. We've had a little bit of a surprise and it's now probable. So therefore we will provide for that $80,000. The third one. Sorry to put it in there again, but it's the one that you see most of the time. Uh, inventory included at 25. Sold for 15. Uh, that is an adjusting event. So therefore you would adjust your inventory down to 15,000. So we had 15,000 in the SFP, 15,000 uh, in the statement of profit or loss. Okay. Uh, the third one, a building in use at the SFP date and valued at $500,000 was completely destroyed by fire. Ouch. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, only half of the value uh, was covered by insurance. Well, fire, flood, now, going back to financial accounting, they are non-adjusting events, okay? 
Uh, however, I'd have thought there that it's material, so you would disclose that within the financial statements. And then you would also disclose there the fact that you are likely to get, is it half of the value back by the insurance company, okay, to sort of explain to the shareholders that hopefully you're going to mitigate this $500,000 loss by recouping 250000 of it, okay. There you go. That's IS10. Keep practicing the questions. Keep going boom, 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 boom. Uh, and you can't go too far wrong if it were to crop up within the exam.